Hi, welcome to this special edition of Empower Solano Job Readiness. My name is Kay Patrice. I'm the founder of Empower Solano, and I, along with April Chambers and Nisi Wilder, are your job readiness co-hosts. Uh, we at Empower Solano are very interested in increasing diversity and inclusion in various industries. We are working to increase pathways to living wages, wage jobs in Solano County. So today we have a special guest that feels exactly the same way. We're going to introduce him in a little bit, but for now, I would like my co-hosts to introduce themselves. Hey, hello, everybody. My name is April Chambers with Empower Solano. I am the project manager with the Workforce Engagement. Hi, my name is Nisi Marie Wilder, and um, I am in the marketing and operations for Empower Solano. So, April, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce our guests? Okay, Nisi and Ms. Kate Patrice, we have a special guest today, Mr. Danny Bernardine. President of the Napa Solano Building and Trades for the Empower Solano Job Readiness Podcast. And I'm going to read a little bit about his bio before bringing him on. Uh, Danny was born and raised in Solano County. And other than attending Chico State University, he's resided there his whole life. Originally a newspaper man, his background includes government affairs and working as a Senate staffer before taking over the BTC. Being a child of two parents in labor, championing the advancement of working men and women has always been a mission. The Napa Solano BTC values its relationship with education and community partners and continue building pipelines to careers by focusing on exposing our youth and young adults to the advantages of joining a union. Welcome, Danny. We are so glad to have you here on our program. And I wanna give you this Yay. And I want to give you this uh, opportunity to go ahead and tell us a little bit more about the program. Thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you to our friend Kate Patrice Williams, who uh, first got a hold of me and everybody I've met here today and everybody who's going to be watching this. Um, as anybody who knows me knows, I love talking about apprenticeship. I love talking about giving opportunities to folks that don't know about them. Um, I myself went through high school, not really being very good with my hands, but didn't know that there was a whole world out there, even if I don't know how to hammer a nail. The construction world is is out there for folks that uh, are really good at using their hands and also good at using their brains. So can't wait to tell you all about it today. And again, thank you so much. Um, the trades can't be in these places without being invited. So thank you. Thank you. It's so glad to have you with us today. So to start with, as April was mentioning, um, the, the BTC, can you tell me what that stands for? Yeah, so uh, it's actually the Napa Solano Building and Construction Trades Council. We have 15 affiliate unions, uh, including many you've heard of, plumbers and steam fitters, electricians, to maybe some that you have in a bricklayer, a boiler maker, things like that. So we do everything you, you would think about construction, vertical construction. Um, there's also maintenance. You know, some of the folks that come in and service your air conditioning union, those are part of Sheet Metal Workers 104. Um, so we do the building, we do the maintenance, and even some of our unions, um, they represent public unions uh, in the workplace. So we're very diverse, but the, the goal in mind is to make sure that uh, an apprentice from the beginning gets the right training, gets the right skills, and is safe on the job. And uh, I'm a one-man show, as they say. Uh, I don't have any staff, just got an intern the other day, tomorrow's the <laughs> first day, look forward to that. But no, I am it right now. I have a board of about six folks that I answer to. And then um, our, we also have a body of delegates um, that we meet twice a month. And we also do a lot of political things. Uh, we do some fundraising. We do some community service. We'll go out and, and help on projects and we go into the schools. Uh, we also do a bus tour of our six training facilities. And we also do a hands-on career fair where we have 500 kids from both Napa and Solano County, as well as some other adults, come and check out uh, hands-on opportunities from our trades. That is amazing. What an amazing opportunity. Um, so what exactly is your role in the BTC? 
So I'm the business manager. Uh, like I said, I'm, well, technically, I think my title is business manager slash secretary treasurer. We want to get technical and use union terms, but I, I, I cover everything. Um, and so I'm the, I'm the face of it. I'm, I do the public speaking. We'll go before councils and, and talk to them about the importance of hiring uh, men and women of the trades uh, to make sure the skilled and trained uh, folks out there are working in their city. Like I said, we do a lot of uh, trying to find our next candidate that shares our values of working people and, and try to help them elevate themselves. And the most important thing is we go out and we look for work for our members. Um, and I support my local unions who do the same. And so when they need assistance at a higher level, they'll come to me. If I need assistance at their level, I'll go to them. And we're also really good connectors. Um, we kind of know everybody and there's always kind of a role to play. Uh, even if you can't do it yourself, you can oftentimes find someone to help as well. And so, um, yeah, it's all about working men and women, finding them work, making sure that they're getting their, their wages, getting their benefits, have safe places to work. And more importantly, they have places to work that aren't two hours away and two bridges away. What are the different trades that you represent? So I guess I could rip through them here. We have um, plumbers and steam fitters, 343. They're located in Vacaville. There's a new big building over there by Wilsey Wood. Uh, in Fairfield, we have sheet metal workers, 104. We have, in Benicia, we have the insulators. We have the boiler makers. And we have the iron workers, um, teamsters, uh, we have the finishing trades, which is District Council 16. We have the painters, we have drywall, we have tapers, then we have the laborers who do general work around the job site. Um, we have, I'm trying to think else. Oh, we have the elevator unions, anything mm -hmm. with more than two stories. Uh, fire, spr uh, the sprinkler fitters, um, not the ones in your yard, but the ones in your ceiling. So every building in California has to have water, have sprinklers. And so um, and each one of those trades has certifications and, and trainings that, that they do. And, you know, we have a lot of work uh, to a bill, SB 54, that was passed. All maintenance in refineries is done by union now. It used to be done by folks coming up from the state. It's all done by, by our, our local unions. And so I probably missed a couple and they'll probably get back to me. Oh, plasterers, cement masons, forgot mm -hmm. about them. Um, who else is going to get mad at me if I, if I don't? I think that's about it. But I've got about 14 or 15 now, and uh, yeah, I got all of them need attention and help, and I, I love doing it, and I learn from each and one, every one of them. Nice, nice. I hear about entry level. So what certifies you just to be, just to come in at entry level? <clears throat> so when I talk to the, to the high school kids and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the adults, I talk about the big four. And this isn't for every union. Every union's different. They okay. each have their own specifications. Electricians, you're gonna have to have math. And we used to call it algebra or whatever. Now it's called, uh, there's another name for it. And there's all kinds of math. They're, they're the experts on that. But basically you need to be 18 and over. You need a GED or a diploma. And that's some, some most do, some don't. You need to have your driver's license and transportation because there's a good chance you're gonna be working. And pass a drug test. We know it's California. We know marijuana is legal, but it's not legal in the building trades. You can, you can get into the trades and you can work forever. And if you get in one little accident and you test, you can throw it all away, right? So I tell the kids, you can smoke weed or you can make six figures. It's on you. And so that is something where, um, you know, we don't, we don't sugarcoat it. We talk openly about it because I mean, it's hard to walk down the street in some cities without smelling it. Right. And so, um, it's out there and um, we're still, it's, it's a safety issue and we're, we're still uh, very serious about it. So the big four, yep. again, driver's license, GED, um, or diploma, be 18 and over and be able to pass the drug. That's about it. Um, is there any particular folks that you're looking for? Um, you had mentioned earlier about diversity. Um, so do you see a lot of inclusion and diversity in the trade, a lot of women, I'm almost 50, you know, who, who can do, who can apply for this? So anybody can apply. Um, certain trades do have physical restrictions and, and that's just the way it is. Um, but yeah, as far as, as inclusion, you know, I think 
if, if anybody says they couldn't be doing better, they're lying. I think that a lot of trades work on it. I think there's state organizations that work on it. We work, um, you know, with a lot of different community groups. Uh, the Iron Workers has has a, a, a cohort they do of just women. Uh, operating engineers, I believe, is our highest uh, population because, I mean, sit in a cab and move equipment, anybody can do that, right? Um, and then, you know, it's funny, I was at Vallejo High one time and this young lady, very small, probably under five feet, just a tiny gal, comes up to me and she's like, you know, I, I'm worried that, you know, I'm too small for this. I said, you need to go call sheet metal workers and you need to go call the insulators because they crawl around in tiny little areas and they need small people. And then there's people who can't be above two stories without their knees knocking. If you have a skill of not being afraid of heights, there's people that walk iron, 6, 10, 20, 30 stories. There's people that sit in cranes on the top of skyscrapers, and you never catch me up there. And right. so um, <laughs> it's, it's and, and we do have trades that are predominantly Latino. We do have trades where more African-Americans are there. Why? I don't know. Whether it's where their training center is, traditionally, what parts of the country that that trade was more popular in. Did they come from shipyards during war times, right? There's... There's all kinds of history in our trades, and, and but I think um, between the local workforce development board, the state workforce development board, um, certain individual programs, I think we always do better. And I think conversations like this is is really uh, where it's at as well. You know, we'll we'll go in anywhere. I've been into halfway houses. I've been into to to all kinds of places. Uh, juvenile hall. Uh, you know, continuation high schools. Everybody gets a chance here. And a lot of times I'll, I'll talk to those populations and I'll, I'll ask them, has anyone ever recruited? Has anyone ever walked in here and said, you are the candidate for me? And that's really what it is. If you can work hard, if you can get to where you need to be, um, we'll take you. I mean, that's that's the point of apprenticeship is to teach. And so, yeah, there are some trades where you're going to need math and you might need a little bit of skill and a little bit of strength. But there are trades where you or I could walk in off the street tomorrow and enter an apprenticeship program get to work and as far as age goes um you know if you can do the job you might end up with a smaller pension at the end but you can enter the trades whenever and another another aspect i think is what's called uh helmets to hard hats is another thing we have and so a lot of our trades are impacted so where you might go down and put your name on a list and wait six months a year to to get interviewed with helmets to hard hats if you come back from the service um you get to skip the line and go right into the trades because you know, military folks are, are already good at showing up on time, taking orders and working hard. Right. And so, um, you know, we know the kind of population that is in the military uh, is kind of the same folks we're talking about. And so um, that's another way that we have a pipeline in there. But no, just being out there in the community and, and just really putting that that fact out there that if you can do the job, we'll take you. And I don't I don't know a lot of folks that say that. And, and it's. It's amazing to see some of the folks and where they come from and where they've been. And they get that they get that first taste of, of benefits and a good job and someone actually on a job site making sure that they're safe and that they have a voice. Because I think that's really what we're talking about here is, is having representation and voice. And that's what labor is all about, is you know, everybody uniting together and having that one voice and having someone they can go to to say, hey, I'm being treated unfairly on this job. Thank you. So I understand that today you are here um, to talk about a specific apprenticeship program. Yeah, our trades introduction program, something we're really proud of and uh, really excited to, to, to have another cohort and to have one locally because it's something that rotates around through Marin County, Sonoma County, Napa County, and Solano County. And this cohort is going to be in Vallejo. Okay. Why don't you tell us about it? So uh, oftentimes it is uh, an 11 week course, but this course we'll be talking about here specifically uh, is gonna be, I believe a four or five week course. It's a little more intense being it's summer. We're trying to, to get it done for those folks that might have the summer off or have some, some things coming up. Um, it's traditionally was a classroom, but during COVID, I think everybody learned that it's pretty easy to jump on a, on a screen like we are today and all be in the same mm -hmm. room together. And so I believe it's a little bit of a hybrid now but what they do is they, 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 there's an orientation, there's an interview process, just similar to, to trying to get in a trade. So it kind of prepares you there for that interview process. There's orientation. And then you're gonna learn what it's like to be in the trades. So you're gonna learn what English skills you need, what math skills you need, 
What's an application look like? What's the interview process look like? What are trades? What are unions? And during that process, you're going to have a guest speaker and they're going to come in and it might be, you know, here's so-and-so from the operating engineers. They're going to tell you what they're all about, how much they make, what their requirements are, you know, what their opportunities are. And then they're going to say, and if you'd like to apply, here's my card, here's my number, and here's the way to, to get involved. As it progresses, we, they actually start talking about life skills as well. Um, they talk about what's it like when you start making six digits, when you used to not make six digits and where to invest your money. And, you know, I, I sat through one of them one day and they were talking about the reasons relationships fail and how it's most of the time it's economical. And they're teaching them about Here's how to have a two income household. Here's how to share an income and things like that. It's like real life stuff, right? And so um, yeah, that, can be, that can be very useful to an 18 year old. And I think there's some 40 year olds where that can also be useful. Thank you. So if I was interested in doing this program, how do I get started? So um, I believe I have a flyer for you all that shows exactly what we're doing. And it looks like Starting in July, mid-July, there's going to be some Zoom uh, orientations, and we're also going, and, it, and then in uh, also at the end of July, look at the orientation, and, it, and the course would start in mid-August and end in early September, and so there is a website, there's a YouTube video that talks a little bit more about it as well, and I think uh, I'll be sharing that with everybody. And you just kind of go through the steps and let Tip know that you're interested. And I think there's some things to fill out. And it's a pretty easy process from what I'm told. And, uh, you know, the folks over there do a really good job uh, of, of weeding through the candidates and making sure that they do have transportation, that they are in for, for the long haul. And so, we, you know, we, we intake somebody, want to make sure they're serious about it. And I think, you know, I think the interview process is a good way for, for an applicant who might not know is this really what I want to do? I think that they're also good about talking about expectations and, and what it would take. And so, uh, like I said, 18 and over, I think is pretty much for this meeting, for this thing, uh, for this cohort, that's one of the few uh, limitations. So it looks like the first orientation starts in mid-July. What is the deadline for folks to apply? Um, I know that they have taken them up right about to there in the past. Um, again, this is something where we work with the North Bay TIP folks. And when I find a candidate, I send them over there and it usually mm -hmm. takes care of itself. So I won't say I'm hands-on on the intake process, but I do know that we have sent folks to them at kind of the last minute and they seem to uh, be able to, to accommodate them. So, and I think that's why there's a lot of opportunity. There's five different times because we know folks can't always be everywhere they want to be. And the, the most important question is, what do I get at the end of this? What is, what is the objective? What do I come out with? So, as I said, um, when the folks come in, they'll also start a process of applying. And so they'll actually have the TIP students apply to the uh, different unions. And I've actually attended some graduations where there's five or six folks that are already, they're ready to rock. They just, they're starting next week, they're starting next month or whatever. And so there's that, and then uh, OSHA certification, I want to say, and they do visit a job site. They get a look at uh, an actual job site. I know there's OSHA certification, and I want to say CPR maybe as well. There are a couple certifications you get out of it. Should review that a little bit more. But um, I do know the OSHA things there, and you do get to visit the the site to see you know what it's like to be there, and then um, you could theoretically already be accepted by the time. There's a nice little ceremony where they pick one of the students to speak, and I usually go find a guest speaker from the community to come in and, and talk to them. So it's fun. To it's so, first so of them, I, it's their only graduation ceremony they've been in, which is a really cool thing. So what I heard is that I'm going to get an introduction and in, in, to all of the various trade unions that are out there, get hands-on help applying to the trade union that I'm interested in, get training that's going to help me be more attractive. Uh, practice that trade union and, and get my get myself ready for this job yeah. uh, and basically help get a foot in the door to to get my career launched. Yeah, and you mentioned a good point too. You also get a certificate that when you apply, if you didn't apply while in the program and you apply later, you can say, look, I, I went through this TIP program, this pre-apprenticeship program, and you know that should and then I know that at least 
there are some unions that give uh, preferential treatment, like I believe sheet metal. One out of every ten, they leave us. Every ten, they leave one spot for a pre-apprenticeship graduate as well, because they understand that 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 person is has done more than another candidate. We're working with some of our nonprofits to find uh, other opportunities for unions to to kind of grease the the wheels as it is to let those folks in because. I mean, if they went through that course, uh, they should be a little bit well more, a little more equipped uh, to be a to be a good apprenticeship candidate. And so, yeah, they do have a certificate that says I went through this, and it is pretty recognizable in a lot of our trades. This is this is fantastic. So we'll make sure that uh, we have links to the uh, application forms and the website available. Um, but the web address is Learn a Construction job.org. And Danny, if they have any questions, is it possible for them to reach out to you or who should, who should people contact? What is that information? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My name and number email is all is out there always. It's uh, I could give it to you right now if that's helpful. Please. Yeah, my name is Danny Bernardini. Uh, cell phone 707-454-6918 and email of Danny BCTC, boy Charlie, Tom Charlie at gmail.com. Might not get back to you right away, but I will get back to you. And if you are a strange number that I don't know, maybe text me and say, hey, I saw your talking head and I want to join the trades. I'll do that. <laughs> this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, Kay Patrice or April, any any questions or, or, or follow up? For me, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, Danny, we spoke a, a week, week and a half ago, and you were already flying high, you were talking about a contract. But then when we start talking about this, like your voice elevated, you could just tell you loved it. Um, this is something you, you were passionate about, you cared about. And, um, and for you to just so quickly make time for us to, uh, to talk about this program. Uh, I feel like I, I went to a program about a year ago, a graduation, I believe it was Benicia Adult School. Um, and I feel like this program might have been affiliated, but it was amazing watching. Bit of a different program. It was a different program. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Well, all right. We're we're back. <laughs> hey, <laughs> anybody offering opportunities to those that want it is good with me, but they're not affiliated with. Me. Oh, got it, got it. But it was just amazing to go to a graduation. And yeah, and you're all invited to this one as well. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I totally want to come. We want to come. Yeah. Well, this has been just wonderful. And uh, April, did you did you have any final words? Um, no, I'm just excited. I'm always excited about new opportunities, especially for everyone, especially for the youth. Um, I believe that this is going to be a really good uh, opportunity, and I'm excited about the apprenticeship program. Nisi, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I'm just really grateful um, as somebody who has struggled with um, reentry and, and rebuilding my life, anything that is going to help folks feel connected and be an important part of, of the community out there, this needs to be spread far and wide. So I'm honored to be a part of this. Thank you so much for what about. you're doing, Danny. It's okay. I, I got you. So yeah, thank the reentry you. part. I forgot about that. We have programs for that as well. Excellent. And that is completely awesome. Well, Danny, first, I would like to thank you for taking the time out to speak to us about the, the program and just giving us a, a really, a really quick but informative oversight. I appreciate you and your time. Uh, to my crew, you know, we did it again and I appreciate everybody for coming on board. Uh, and thank you all uh, for attending this job readiness. Um, uh, pilot program and the, spe the special edition of the labor for the for the labor edition. We love you guys, and until we meet again, we're on it. Thank you, Danny. Thank Peace you. Thank you. Place. Keep doing what you do. We oh, absolutely. It. it takes a village, you guys. Have a good day.